This is the normal route in the cellar, but that's boring, it takes very long, so what if we enabled savage mode and went through the unintended secret way to skip the cutscene? Would that be possible? And if yes, how many of these secret routes are there in the first 4 levels of the tower? Well, in this video I'll list my findings ranging from insane secret ways that almost nobody knows about, to mind-blowing facts about each level. When you're normally playing these platformer levels, nothing really seems out of the ordinary. However, if you start going back like this, you realize that there's something going on. And to know exactly what's going on, we need to enter the editor. Inside the editor, we can see a lot of different triggers and behind the scenes stuff. And so using this, we can, for example, show every single hidden object like this. And now, if we play the level, if we play this part, you can see a toggle trigger right there and if I touch it there is a block that just appeared there that does not allow you to go back anymore so things like this that are really really interesting that happen behind the scenes are the things that you can only see in the editor you can also enable the hitboxes to know exactly where you can land and what hazards they are so this is just one of many examples that I'm gonna show you guys today so I guess let's just start with the tower the very first platformer level which is honestly a pretty cool level. A pretty cool fact about every single platformer level is how cool the transitions are between each level. While these levels may not really make any sense when they when you just play it normally, they actually do a lot when you look at the transitions deeply. You can see that in here, I'm falling into a green sort of uh, pit. And if we go on to the sewers, you can see that you enter from top to bottom through a pipe into a green level. So that makes a lot of sense. And also the last transition into this level, you can see that we're going uh, right. We're going towards the right. We entered a door and the atmosphere is kind of like black and white. And if you go on to the next level, you can see that this is exactly where we left off. And the chain is like exactly the same. You can see that one chain. And with that, we are inside the cellar. The cellar has so many really, really interesting secrets. It's absolutely insane. One of the secrets, I think I still don't quite understand understand to be honest but the first one is in here it's not really that much of a big deal but it's still very fun to know you know when you enter this part this guy says i'm warning you and if you go onto the cellar in the editor, you can see that there's this spawn trigger. And because we are robots, we can actually completely skip this trigger and, you know, basically make him uh, shut up because he talks a little bit too much, to be honest. You shouldn't be here. I'm warning you. Okay, so the trigger is somewhere in here. And I really don't want to try and, you know, just do this. Yo, I did it. Let's go. All right, nice. And the next one is actually, like, immediately after it. But this is what this one is really really hard so you guys know how in here if you go like that okay it didn't work but you see that once you enter this part there is a cutscene. this guy starts talking he, he starts like yapping about a bunch of things <laughs> However, if you go to the cellar in the editor and then you go to here and click on hide invisible, you remove that, you can see that there is a spawn trigger, spawn 19. This basically starts this whole sequence in here. It's a lot of triggers, which is basically this cutscene in here. The whole cutscene basically starts. This is the hitbox for the robot, so it's it doesn't touch at all with the trigger, which means if we can barely land on here with without going too much to the top we can skip this trigger i'm gonna try my very best to do that i actually want to try it out problem with this is that it's really really far into the level so if i mess it up i'm gonna have to you know repeat this whole tower oh no i'm so bad no so okay i want to see if this time i'm gonna be able to do it because if not that's not that very cool so you can see in here i have to barely uh, oh my god i did it let's go oh my god that was literally the first ever try you can see that i'm in here and we saw that the trigger is somewhere above like that so if i jump in here it's no problem you can see that there is no cutscene whatsoever if i jump in here the cutscene is gonna start oh uh, yeah i can just sit here free free of charge yeah but then if i jump like that he starts ranting off 
stuff. <laughs> However, a fun fact that is absolutely mind blowing about this part is something I'm gonna show you in a bit somewhere up there. And it's crazy, but yeah. And also, another thing in here is that you see how these spikes fall? You can actually go through them if you have a very precise jump. I actually wanna try that as well. This, this, this video is pretty challenging for me as well, so I'm just gonna. Uh, okay, that's pretty hard. Okay, come on, come on this time. Beam, jump like that between these spikes because you can see that there's like a small delay between uh, the spike falling like that and then boom yes oh my god i got it let's go that's really good for speed running and you can also do this Oh no, that's pretty hard. <laughs> that, that, that one you guys probably already know about, but and with that we have the cellar, and you can see the transition. Look at this. Focus on that. There's like a cave on the right, and it kind of goes to purple. This is like so much thought has been put into these levels. They kind of seem like random at first, but when you focus on the transitions, you can see that you enter out of a cave into a purple level. That's a, that's honestly an awesome detail. <laughs> Let's actually quickly go back to the cellar because there is a fun fact about these spikes that I want to talk about. And at first they seem pretty dangerous but when you look at the editor you can see how small the actual spike hitbox is like basically if you hit the top of it it's completely safe like that Boom. oh my god i didn't even die to that wow yeah these ones just have a pretty small hitbox oh you guys can see something up there which we're just gonna be talking about in a bit don't worry but before i show you guys that one i actually want to go back to this they works. Now they're very cool fun facts. Actually two or three even. So yeah, that's why I think this level is pretty cool. So the first thing is, you know how when you spawn, there's like this nice little jump that you do. That's actually a pink orb. You can see that there's a pink orb with no multi-active. So it only works once when you land on it and then it doesn't work anymore. And there is the fire in the hole, my dudes. And a very sneaky thing in here. You can see that there's a toggle for one, three, one. Toggle means it basically deletes you can see it as uh, not really deletes it's a toggle it toggles it off let's put it that way and it toggles this jump pad off so you can see that if you stay straight like that go down you will actually jump on the pink orb however if you go to the right just a little bit you'll touch that and then the pink orb does not exist anymore however what's really fun about that is you can actually let's say this was the player you can actually go like that and then barely touch it and also barely barely touch this pink orb which basically means you don't toggle this off and you also don't touch it so that means what's gonna happen is that you can basically enable it later so normally you go like that and boom you can see the trail as well however if you do this precise lineup i don't know if it worked now but you have to kind of go left now and if the pink orb is still there then it worked yo it did work and now it doesn't anymore that's pretty cool show your friends that this is a normal level and then go back and see boom oh wait there's there's a big orb And the next very, very fun thing is that there is a way to speedrun this level very, very easily. And all you have to do is simply reach to this block before it goes behind the wall. So let me show you. I'm just going to try my best to get there. And once you get that, you have a very good chance of getting a speedrun, like probably a top 20 or something on the speedrun.com list. So, and my plan is to get a rank on speedrun.com. This is going to be a nightmare but it's gonna happen trust me oh my god oh my god oh my god that was so close you have to be so fast to get that i've been doing this for quite a few minutes now and uh, yeah it, it's pretty hard yes no what that was so fast how did i not get that bro come on now this time are you to bro this this game is toileting me at this point there's no shot Come on! Yes! Oh my god! Oh my god, come on! No! Oh my god! Why? Yes! Oh my god, again! No way! Come on! Oh my god, come on, I got a chance! Let's go! Come on, come on! The door, the door, the door! Yes! 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 This, and then that! And then this! And then the final one, which you should do like that! Oh my god! 
Oh my god! Why do I always die on the last possible spike? Why? Pattern, so now it all comes down to the final jump! Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. I don't know what the- I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm stupid or if I'm jumping too early. I don't know what the- Oh my god, bro. No! I can't let this be, bro. I was so close. Come on! I wanna do this. I don't really care. Even if the video turns into a speedrunning video. <laughs> I really wanna do this now. Yes! Again! Come on! Yes! Top 19 on speedrun.com, my dudes. The Sewers is also a level that has been previewed on Robnob's channel like a very, very long time ago. And we can actually spot the differences between the Sewers in the beta version of 2.2 compared to the final version, which is the one that we have right now. So you can basically see this is the very first part. And you can see that the coins were pixel art coins. They were pixelated coins. However, now they are non-pixelated. And I honestly like these ones just a tiny bit more. I think the other ones were still okay, but these ones just a little bit better. And another thing is that a lot of these art styles, a lot of these objects have been chained. You can take a look at these boxes, these ones in here, and just kind of focus on them for a few seconds. Three, two, one. And then look at them now. They look much, much different now. And another thing that has been changed are pretty much every single object that has like a wooden structure. So these ones, as as well like the blocks that move left and right and these ones they look much different than the ones that we saw in the sneak peek and honestly these ones look so so much better in comparison to these ones these ones basically have no shading and also this block doesn't did not use to move so this one right now moves left and right you can see that it's static however in the game there's actually a saw blade that kind of moves it back and forth and also look at this bros look at this check out this box is there a grass object on it no however that Back then there was a grass object on it <laughs> and yeah that's i think that's pretty much it for the sewers and yeah let's actually move on to some of the you know a little bit more juicy secrets about these levels a fun fact about this level the secret hollow is that this part the way it works is that you get teleported into here and then you basically fall like that and what's really interesting about this is that it actually syncs perfectly with the music you can see that Robtop even added a BPM trigger, which basically adds these uh, guidelines for the music to make sure that the music sync is perfect. Listen. <laughs> That's so cool. And another thing that really syncs are these blocks. It's ridiculous. It's insane to me how much work and how much thought has been put into especially this level. Like a lot of people say that these levels were rushed, but I think the attention to detail in that was put into these levels is absolutely nuts. And while we're at it, how about we go with the boss, the boss fight that is at the very end, the cursed thorn. And as you guys know, the boss shoots two different types of fireballs. The first one is a normal one that kills you if you touch it and until it explodes and the second one is once it explodes it basically shoots out this shard which you can collect which you can shoot back at the boss and if you take a look at this part you can see that there are also particles so this one is for charging when the boss is charging for a red fireball he's gonna play this animation and once the fireball touches it's gonna play this animation and the same thing is for the green shard however something really really interesting is is that there are also blue particles which means there may have been an abandoned feature for this boss specifically we can see that all of the particles in here have been made for all three colors so there may be a chance that the boss was supposed to throw a blue fireball at you which honestly i have no idea what it could be for maybe you had the ability to freeze the boss we don't really 
know. But that's definitely very, very interesting to think about. And here I recreated how it would have looked like if he shot a blue fireball. And you can see that it looks absolutely insane. And you can see that the charging animations and all the animation that I talked about are visible in here. So yeah, that's very, very interesting. Let me know what you guys think this fireball might have done to the boss or to this whole boss fight. Alright, and the last secret that I want to talk about is in the cellar. This secret is absolutely historical, I like to call it, because it, it may actually change the whole industry of speedrunning this game. And it's in this part. You see how there's this cutscene that basically takes about half a minute, you can say. However, what if I told you there's a secret trigger right up there that if you hit, it's gonna skip the whole cutscene. Here we are in the editor you can see this is the trigger that you have to hit if you manage to get up there it's basically you've completed the game you can pretty much say so let me just bring this down to here and see what would happen if you actually managed to go up right so we are in here now let's just go normally into here and let's say now you jump really far and hit this one look at what's gonna happen you're gonna get the bomb and then you can place it in here and then it's gonna explode and you can skip the whole section and this guy just keeps ranting off and you just make it out of here so if there was a way just to get up here somehow this trigger it's there it's on touch trigger you just have to touch it then this bomb will come and you can skip the whole thing let me show you how it may look like <laughs> Another thing is that if you manage to get really high Y velocity, what you can do is you can jump on top of everything and fall in here and get to this trigger, which is basically gonna skip you immediately to the next part. This is something that I find absolutely nuts. If we somehow manage to find a way to boost ourselves, maybe using a physics bug or something similar that's gonna be found in the future, it's gonna cut off like 30 seconds of a speed run for this level, which is gonna look insane just like you guys saw and yeah that has been it for this video make sure to slap that like button and also subscribe and thanks to all of the people on the screen for the membership subscription and yeah watch this video if you want to see more secret ways about the main channel or watch this one if you want to see me recreate subway surface in geometry dash that was a big big mistake or click here to watch me add a tnt to my game that was a painful experience as well but yeah thank you guys so much for watching like subscribe don't forget about that and we'll see you guys in the next video.